Got to be honest with you, I'm, I'm like you, like everybody else, um, sick and tired of waking up uh, early in the morning and you know starting to do my homework, my prep uh, for for what I do here, and, and to be confronted with another mass shooting, um, you know, taking the lives of, of innocent people, just nonsensical, just crap, makes you want to pull your hair out. And again, um, Memphis has been taking it on the chin this past week. You got a uh, gunman actually live streamed himself uh, killing four people, driving around killing four people. Um, let's take that and put that aside. This, uh, this individual, uh, this individual was arrested a couple of years ago on um, attempted murder. Attempted murder served less than a year. Served less than a year. You want to look, you want to look at who's to, one of the, 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 the culprits in these four people being dead? The voters. It's the voters. You decided, we, we decided to put people into office, to put people into positions where you're going to allow violent criminals to get out. And, and it's not even just about violent criminals, just about criminals in, in general. I, I have no problem. I have no problem with certain types of uh, penal reform and, and whatnot and getting nonviolent offenders out, in particular with old drug cases, whatever it may be. But for people that commit crimes habitually, how do you let them out? They're just going to go ahead and do it again. That's obviously a much different scenario story in the uh, New York papers today. Uh, the serial, serial thief pickpocket, Times Square, has been stealing for 30 years. 30 years again and again and again and again and again and they arrest him when they gets caught and they let him go uh, you know i'm being honest and i know i've got and I, I i'm sorry you know to to the people that, that own businesses in the city and whatnot but at some point in time you're going to have to push back too you're going to have to say you know what i'm just not going to pay taxes anymore i'm not going to contribute uh, to this, this nonsense, I, I guys, you know, explain to me, explain to me, you, you planning a vacation or getaway. Why would you go to New York? It's obviously the, the people who run the area, obviously the voters, they don't give a shit about you because they vote people in the office that will there and, and, and harass you. Times square is a tourist destination. It's a, a catch and release program when it comes to criminals. Why would you go there? Why would you take your kids there? Honestly, you're going to take your kids to a place like that? Rather stick a hot poker in my eye. And again, it makes me sad. Um, used to go there all the time. Used to live there for 10 years. It's wrecked. Okay? Don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. They wrecked it. Don't go. Um, ECB. Raising rates by historic 75 basis points. You're upstairs at a recession. Trying to shore up the euro, which has been falling precipitously for some time now. Um, how is this going to help when it comes to inflation? It's not. It's not. I mean, it's it's got to do something. Do something. Raise rates. And then they can always come back. Well, we tried because... Uh, Conventional wisdom out there is that if a um, central bank raises rates, they're going to be able to handle inflation. How, how the hell, how the hell are you going to handle inflation when Vladimir Putin cuts your ass off when it comes to energy? And energy makes the world go round. Uh, if your costs are going up everywhere, everywhere because energy costs are going up. Um, if the ECB is going to be able to do something about this? No, no, it's blah, 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 blah. Same, same crap that we're getting here as well. The um, new uh, prime minister, UK, Liz Truss, uh, 
well, again, I, I like this. At least she's going to lift the fracking ban and increase uh, North Sea drilling. Uh, also, got always thought we're gonna we're gonna accelerate offshore wind farms. Uh, announced a four hundred pound energy bill discount. Mm hmm. And, and got rid of some taxes as well, trying to cap what people are going to be paying. And it's, you know, you're emptying a bathtub with a spoon. I, I guess it's something. But uh, yeah. <laughs> what was it yesterday, day before on the program? It's, again, surreal. Surreal. You know, the, the equivalent of Fox and Friends in the UK, they're spinning a, uh, they're spinning a wheel a la, uh, you know, Price is Right to see uh, what your energy savings are going to be. That's how bad it is. People, these people are, are desperate. We already talked about the amount of businesses that, as it stands, are going to have to shut down. They're not going to have a choice. It's going to be almost like a, a, a COVID situation without the government mandating and being shut down. I can't afford to keep the lights on. Can't afford to keep the pub open. Can't afford to keep the restaurant open. You're going to see more and more places go out of business all over Europe because of this. Fed uh, gives a bit of a chit chat today. Uh, uh, Cato Institute uh, question and answer situation. Um, some of it, I love Cato. I I, I do. I, it's it's a libertarian you know think tank, if you will. But again, they go off the deep end sometimes with the whole crypto crap. You got a bunch of true believers over there as well. I was actually happy Powell said that there's no store of value in crypto. It's a speculative asset, if you even want to call it that. The guy, the guy asking the questions from Cato, I don't know if you remember this, this a couple of years ago, Janet Yellen was in charge of the Fed and, and somebody photobombed her behind with a sign saying, buy Bitcoin. And the guy admitted that that's now his son-in-law. Says a lot. But anyway, yeah, it's a libertarian think tank. And again, I'm asking questions in regard to the Fed. Jay Powell didn't say anything different than he, he had before. Initial reaction from the market was to sell off and afraid that he was going to be too hawkish. At this point in time, people, does it really, does it really matter? Do you really think it matters? I know all the nudging state and all the uh, powers that be in the pundits are telling you it does, but it really doesn't. Anyway, um, California narrowly avoided rolling uh, blackouts and they still might get them. Uh, you know, you know but what's, what's funny about the entire situation and you don't realize this, you know, that, that Los Angeles run 30% of their electricity is coal. Right now, right now, they're using natural gas generators, backup generators to uh, keep everything going. Yeah. So you know, in order to get yourself off of fossil fuels, you're going to have to go ahead and use fossil fuels, right? Again, yeah, there's no logic or reason to these things. These are just things that people feel. Again, it, it's there's like everybody is addicted to freaking dopamine. And I've, they've got to make themselves feel good because of how, how they signal crap out, virtue signaling all over the place. Again, you can be an environmentalist. I consider myself an environmentalist, except I have a brain. And I understand in order to get from point A to point B, it's going to it's going to take some time um, and it's going to take some technology that, quite frankly, we just don't have right now. It's that simple. Um, man, who knew I, 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 some of these stories I, I pick up and I read? I'm like, you know, I didn't hear this. I, I, this is where we're at as a country, uh, by the way, that it's now a um, it's a social media challenge. Remember Ice Bucket Challenge and some of these other I mean, that was that was for what was that for ALS? If I'm not mistaken. But there's been other ridiculous uh, social media challenges that were dangerous, got people hurt. Uh, new, you know, what the latest social media challenge is stealing Hyundai's and Kia's, the cars. Yeah, 
There, there has been a swath of Hyundais and Kias and a myriad of places around the country that are getting stolen. And it's, it's, a, it's an actual social media challenge. I, I guess the Hyundais and Kias, they, don't, they have the traditional uh, key for the car without the chip being involved to unlock the car. And they're getting stolen all over the place. Yeah, the other, the other one that I'm seeing, I mean, that's just for, hey, I'm an a-hole and it's a Facebook challenge and I got to do it because I am an a-hole. Um, this is aside from the other one where they're stealing catalytic converters for uh, some of the, uh, uh, the actual metals that are in the catalytic converters so they can turn around and sell them. Again, America, OG, America, today. Um, piece today, higher education. I know we talked a lot about this, uh, a lot of Jason Riley piece. This one's by Alan Gazello and, and Scott Wyatt talking about how higher education can, uh, trying to redis rediscover its purpose. And again, many of the points that are made in this article, very similar to what we've talked about here and streamlining the process, making it, making it more simple and easy for people to get degrees. Um, make no bones about it. You know, the, the longer that these schools can extend your education, the more money is going to be in their pockets. One of the ideas they had, I, I didn't even think about it. It's, it's kind of bright is, uh, why not keep the schools open all year? I, I, aside from, I know summer school, you get, you know, some classes that you can take there. Why don't you just make it a year long process and then, you know, get the kids out in, in, you know, two and a half, three years. Make it a hell of a lot more simple. Make it easier. Also, getting rid of all the BS classes. We've talked about this again and again and again. You know, you, you get kids through. In, in the column, it's actually kind of interesting. They talk about um, sorry, the young man in the Verizon store selling phones. But that clearly wasn't his first choice in life. His goal when he went to college had been to become a physical therapist. He loved the field, and in his freshman year, it seemed to offer many attractive possibilities. Then he was informed that he lacked the required math class to continue in the program. Sorry, but he should have to take, could, he would have to take the class and wait an entire year, entire year, to reapply with no promise he would be admitted into the competitive program next time around. A year would go by. He would accumulate more student debt, but made no real progress toward the credential that he wanted and the taxpayer's investment in his education, support, whatnot would be for naught. Um, it happens all the time. You know, ha happens all. These are all accredited universities, right? Why is it that, why is it that only, uh, they had the percentage here as far as uh, transfer credits are concerned, only about 40%. If you want to switch from one school to another, whatever reason it may be, only 40% of the credits will, will transfer. Why, why is that? It, 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 let me ask you a question. Is, is physics at the University of Maryland different than physics at Princeton? Are the laws of physics different in uh, Trenton, New Jersey and College Park, Maryland? No, no. Again, Stop telling me, stop telling, stop, stop. You're insulting our intelligence. Stop saying, okay, that you're some nonprofit organization institution. You're not. You're a hedge fund. You're a business. And you'll do everything and anything to bang these kids out. Why shouldn't you have, why shouldn't there be a fast track program for kids that want to become Physicians, they can always, if, if it's not for them, if they can't handle it, they can always drop, become a, phys, uh, a physician assistant or get into some other area within the field or switch over. But yeah, you know, it's interesting that other places around the globe do that. We don't do it here because the goal is obviously to bang the people out, including the taxpayers, uh, as much as humanly possible. It is what it is. Saw so this uh, story today. And... Um, Again, it taking me back in time on, on my radio show. I don't know when I did this um, a few years ago. We played a, uh, a clip from uh, South Park. Um, I, I question, again, I, I understand valuation, whatnot. And, and listen, I happen to be a Netflix customer. 
But I saw what the stock was trading at. And I saw the problems coming down the road. And I said, same thing. I said, yeah, this it's overvalued. They're going to run into problems. Uh, Netflix doesn't own most of its shows that it airs there. Um, and other companies are going to start streaming services and they're going to take their shows back. Not to mention a lot of the content that Netflix was producing was absolute crap. And on that South Park episode, the kids on South Park, they call up Netflix. They want to start their own superhero series called Coon and Friends. And the guy answers the phone. He says, you know, welcome to Netflix. You've been greenlighted. And basically, anybody calls up, you know, what would you like? Would you like to have just a pilot or would you like to have uh, six episodes? And, you know, it's no thought. And the lady in the background, oh, we got a show about transsexual dragons. Yeah. Garbage. Um, it, it has to make the transition to the ad supported model product placement. And it also has to get its act together in regards to its artificial intel intelligence, which is garbage. Not many people find it difficult to find programs on Netflix. Drives me absolutely insane. Um, but some of the things they're having to resort to now, I, this is a joke, right? I mean, it's something. But again, this is a, akin to emptying out the swimming pool with the spoon. Netflix hunts for cost cuts, want to cut back on their cloud computing. And corporate swag. Yeah, I guess workers at Netflix could get unlimited corporate swag, coffee cups, onesies, T-shirts. Now they can only get $300 a year. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that'll, that'll stop the bleeding, fellas. That, that, that'll do it. Anyway, uh, short and sweet today, kids. Got a bunch of television, radio stuff I got to do. Watchdogonwallstreet.com, our site. Watchdogonwallstreet.com. We'll see you.